GLCC family, welcome to this deliverance service in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I know for sure the Lord will bless you, the Lord will deliver you, the Lord will restore you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please welcome, like our page, you can also create watch party and encourage your friends to watch together. If thou be blessed, you'll be a partaker of the blessing together with them because you'll be the channel the Lord will have used to connect them to this blessing. Once again, thank you so much for joining. Welcome and the Lord bless you. So please, let's open with this service with a word of prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we worship you, we bless your holy name. Thank you for this service. Thank you, Master. Daddy, please minister to us. Daddy, please reveal your will, your plan, your purpose to us, O Lord. Deliver your people tonight. Heal your people. Stretch your hand and do wonders. And let your name be exalted. Thank you for everyone who has tuned in. And them that will be tuning into this service, bless them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen. Once again, welcome to this service in the precious name of Jesus. I'm sharing with us on what I'm calling dominion over death. On a Friday, I was dealing with the force of poverty. How to break that force of poverty. And today, I'll be showing you how to deal with the spirit of death, the force of death, that you may have dominion over it in the name of Jesus Christ. Death seems to be the most feared enemy by many people. To many, death has no solution. Death has no remedy. But... I want to submit the truth of God's word to you tonight. And you realize once you have given your life to Christ, you have dominion over dead by knowledge. Now, when Christ, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, was hung on the cross, we saw in John chapter 19, verse 30, his last word was, It is finished. And that word, it is finished, the Greek word is tetelestai, meaning the work he did there was perfectly perfect. He did a complete work on the cross. That's what you need to realize. And in the delivery of mankind, death was part of the, the packing Jesus Christ was dealing with. You remember, he began by dealing with the sin. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, that he who knew no sin was meant to be seen for us, that we may become the righteousness of God. Being the righteousness of God means sin has no dominion over your life. He destroyed sin. He destroyed the dominion of sin in your life. You are the righteousness of God. He also dealt with the curses. The Bible talks of this in Galatians chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, that he became a curse for us. For it is written, curse is every man that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham may come to us through Christ by faith. So Jesus Christ became a curse. He died the death of the cross to become a curse for us, that he may deal with the curses, and number two, that he may give us, we who are Gentiles, access to the Abrahamic blessing. He gave us access to Abrahamic blessing. And among the Abrahamic blessing we see is long life. God told Abraham, with long life will I satisfy you. So he gave him access to long life. I mean, we, through the death of the cross, that is, which is a curse. It gave us access to the Abrahamic blessing. He also dealt with, with the sicknesses by his tribes. 
the Bible says we were healed. Now, as he was dealing with all these things, many people accepted the way he dealt with. Now, the same way he dealt with this is the same way he dealt with the dead. He dealt with the dead. Now, let's read together in the book of Hebrew, chapter number 2, please. Hebrew, chapter number 2, and verse 14 and 15. Hebrew chapter 2. Let's read together if you have your Bible, please. Verse 14 and 15. The Bible says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and the blood, he himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that is the power of dead, and that is the devil, and deliver them all through fear of dead, while all their lifetime subject to bondage. Hear the statement. For as much as children are partakers of flesh and the blood. What do we mean? We know from scripture that in the beginning, there was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. This word we are talking of Christ. All things were meant by him, and nothing was meant except that which was meant by, by him. The Bible talks of him being the light of the world that lighted every man. Now, this word, the Bible says, was meant flesh. That's what we mean by Jesus Christ partaking flesh and the blood. In other words, that word which was there in the beginning was was man the flesh he was born in the flesh and the blood he was born now with the flesh and the blood that's what you mean he was born with the flesh and the blood jesus i mean christ the word that was in the beginning was uh, was meant a partaker of flesh and the blood and the bible says through his death the Bible says he destroyed all at the power of our dead. Now, the word to destroy here does not mean to kill. The Greek word for destroying is katagio. Katagio means to render jobless. It means to render idle. It means to render unemployed. So Satan, all oh, at the power of our dead, was rendered jobless was rendered and employed as far as death is concerned remember he had the power of a dead he was rendered idle he was rendered inactive that's what another fashion says he was rendered and employed he was rendered inactive he was he was he was rendered to have no further efficiency he was deprived of force and the power. The power of death was deprived from him. That's what you need to understand, child of God. That he may deliver. Verse 15. And the Bible says, And deliver them all through fear of death, while all their lifetime subject to bondage. That's what I said. Many people fear death. But let me tell you, child of God, Jesus Christ dealt with the dead as well as sin. He dealt with the sickness just the same way he dealt with the dead. He dealt with the dead perfectly perfect. He dealt with it. So death has no dominion over your life. That's what you need to understand. Now, in the spiritual realm, Knowledge determines your acreage of possession. Knowledge determines how much you can get from God. How much you can possess. That's why Satan wants people to stay in ignorance. Wants people to operate in ignorance. He doesn't want you to operate in knowledge. He wants you to operate in ignorance. Child of God. That's what has meant many people captive. All through the fear of death had been meant captive in their lives. Knowledge. Knowledge is very key. 
Knowledge is what gives you authority. The knowledge of the truth is what generates the force of freedom. The knowledge of the truth, John 8, 32. If you continue in my word, you shall be, you shall know the truth. I mean, you shall be my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So the knowledge of the truth is what generates the force of freedom. Look at Psalm 82. You will agree with me. Psalm 82. And I want to read first number 5 all the way to 7. Psalm 82. Hear what the word of God says. And I will read first, from first number 5. The Bible says they know not. What do we mean by that statement? They are in ignorance. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. That means they have no knowledge. There is no light of the gospel. There is no light of the scripture. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. In other words, things are not moving the way they ought to move. Verse 6, I have said you are God, and all of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Now that scripture is telling us you are in a superior class. You are in a higher realm. But because of lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, you fall like ordinary people. That shall not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord give you understanding tonight. The enemy takes advantage of our ignorance. To keep us in bondage. Now listen. I love this man called Apostle Paul. Because he gave himself to know. He gave himself to search for knowledge. That's why you hear him say. That I may know him. And the power that raised him from the dead. He gave himself to know. Even Apostle Peter wanted brethren. To be careful of the Apostle Paul. Because he had depth in the scripture. He had depth in the things of God. He had a lot of knowledge. A lot of wisdom. And here what Apostle Paul says. A man with knowledge. Death would not threaten him. In Philippians chapter 1. And verse 21. Philippians chapter 1. Let's read first, first number 21. All the way to 20, around 26, 27, 26. The Bible says, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. That man is not fearing death at all. Death has no dominion. Verse 22, But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I would not. Hear what he says. But if I live in the flesh. This is the fruit of my, I'm the one choosing. I'm the one choosing. I'm the one, my labor now, my effort in the world, in the work of God, in my commitment to God, is what determines my choice. And he says, yet what I, sh I shall choose, I will know. I don't, I don't know what to choose. Verse 23, for I am in a straight betwixt two, having a desire to depart, and to be with the Christ. That means desire to go, to die, and be with the Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your fatherance and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me, by my coming to you again. Only, okay, allow me to pause there. Now, listen to what Apostle Paul is saying. He say, I am in between two things. Either to live or to die. In other words, what Paul was saying this statement because he had already done his work. Remember, he had already said, I have fought the good fight of faith. I have finished my cause. I have run the race. And I have already finished. I have run the race. 
he had accomplished according to God's purpose, Paul realized he had already finished his course on the earth. And it is at this statement he says, I am in between two things now. Either to live or to die. For me, if I die now, I'm going to receive the crown. But because of the way you are, I can see you are still premature. You have not yet come of age. I can see fear in you. I will choose to live that I may, I may, I may minister to you. That's why he says, to live is for their gain. But if he dies, it's for his gain. If he chooses to live, it's for their gain. He is choosing to live that he may teach them. He may train them. In other words, he, was, he had the say, the final say over his life because of knowledge, because of wisdom, because of understanding. He had a say over his departure time. Child of God, if you can give yourself to the knowledge, to the word of God, you will not fear death. COVID-19 will not terrify you. Hear me, child of God. The reason as to why the whole world is magnifying COVID-19 is to inject fear in the people. That they may, they may be cowed. They may be intimidated. They may be tormented. They may be quenched by this thing. But if you can walk in knowledge. This knowledge will set you free. Remember where we have read in Hebrews chapter number 2, verse 15, um, verse 14, Jesus Christ, through his death, the Bible says, he destroyed, he catagion, who had the power of a dead. He rendered, he who had the power of a dead, idol. He rendered Satan powerless. He rendered Satan, who had the power of a dead, and a blind. He rendered him jobless. He has no power over you. And we have seen in verse 15 that he may deliver all those who are in fear, who are in the bondage of fear, who are in the bondage of fear. So the news you have seen and the negative news you have seen all over is to cause fear. That you may be in bondage. That's why when they when they talk of many people who have gotten healed, they don't call it breaking news. But when they talk of two people who have died, they say breaking news. When they talk of few people who have gotten sick, for example, they say a hundred people have gotten sick of this COVID nineteen. You will hear them say breaking news. And that's what they will be magnifying all over in the media. Not only in Kenya, but in the whole world. That's what they are mag magnifying. What do they want to do? The enemy is using that platform to inject fear. But the Lord is bringing knowledge to you that you may be delivered from the bondage of death. That is fear in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord give you understanding. Now, very briefly, let me show you how to disarm dead because you can disarm it. You can render dead powerless. It doesn't matter the, the, the source of dead. Is it witchcraft? Is it accident? Is it a bullet? You can render it powerless. You can disarm dead. That's why Paul was asking dead, where is your sting, O dead? In other words, where is your power? Paul had already dealt with it. He chose to die. He chose to sleep. The Bible talks of them that sleep. You see, you are not permitted to die, child of God. People are falling like cockroaches. It's not the will of God. It's not your portion, child of God. Paul says in First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 6 to 7, he's talking of them that sleep. Those who go to sleep, that means who have finished their assignment, who have who, who die now in the Lord, you don't die, you sleep, you sleep in the Lord. And he, the, he says, Those who sleep, they sleep at night, they don't sleep during the day, they sleep at night. Those who sleep do not sleep during the day, they sleep at night. And you remember what God told Moses, He told Moses. The number of years of a man shall be 120 years. 
120 years, the same was spoken to, to Noah after he came out of the ark. The number of years of a man shall be 120 years. And I tell you, Moses lived to see that prophecy, that promise come to pass in his life. When he was about to sleep, he had already reached 120 years. And the Bible says his eyes were not dim. And his natural strength was not abated. Moses was still strong. He climbed to the mountain. And it's on the mountain that he slept. He disappeared. He slept at 120 years. Having accomplished his assignment. Having fulfilled his purpose on earth. But you see someone at 40 is waiting a will. You are waiting your will. What have you done? What have you accomplished? You don't even have a grandchild. And you are showing people where you shall be buried when you die. You need to come out of that bondage, child of God. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. How can we disarm death? Because you can tell death you have no power. You have no dominion. I will live to fulfill the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living. Whether the enemy likes it or not. If there was someone who would have given up in life, was Apostle Paul. But he never gave up. He talks of being striped. He was striped several times. What Jesus received. Jesus received 39 strokes. And when they struck him, he asked, they, he asked them, If you are doing this to a green tree, what shall you do to the dry one? Paul received 39 strokes five times. Five times. He received them severally. He was struck with the, with the iron bars. With the iron bars. He suffered. She wrecked several times in the deep sea. But yet the man would not say I die. The man would not accept death. He refused to die. I challenge you child of God. No matter the arrows they are firing to you. Say I will not die. I refuse to die. In the mighty name of Jesus. No matter this coffin I did, I refuse to die. And no matter this plague, maybe HIV, AIDS, I will not die. I will live my life in fullness. You will be able to, to destroy that sting of death. That's what Paul says. Where is your sting? Oh, dead. In other words, dead was stingless. If you will permit me to use my English. It was stingless to Paul. In Jesus' mighty name. So, Psalm 91. Let's go there. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. I will just pick a few points here to show you how you can disarm death in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 91. Are you there? If you have your Bible, you can read together Psalm 91. Psalm 91. First one, the Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's the beginning now. Dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. What do we mean by this statement? We mean by dwelling in His presence. Abiding in the presence of God. When you talk of so that means long life here, I'm talking it as a portion for the beloved, for the children of God, for the children of God. If you are not yet born again, you need to surrender your life to Christ. I'm talking of he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, dwelling in the secret place here, I'm talking of you abiding in his presence. I'm talking of you abiding in his word. And his word abiding in you. It's what Jesus says in John 15. You, you need to put out just a mark in 91. Psalms 91 because you are coming there again. And let's go to John. John chapter, chapter 15. John 15. And verse number 4. Here what the Lord says. He says, Abide in me, and I in you. 
as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me i am divine ye are the branches he that abided me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me you can do nothing now i'm talking of you remaining connected when i talk of you dwelling in a secret place i'm talking of you abiding in his presence and number two remaining connected with god and in his word listen carefully you in his presence carrying his presence conscious presence having that consciousness i am connected in the christ i am a branch of the true vine being conscious of what is flowing in the true vine is what is flowing in the branch being conscious i am not operating by my own strength but the power the zohar life the life that flows in christ is the one flowing in me now this necessitates the ability of god the life of god which is superior to that to flow in your life so dwelling in his presence here commands you walking in knowledge of the scripture operating in the knowledge of who you are operating in the knowledge of what is at your disposal from christ what is available what you can access in the word of god now if you look in colossians 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 chapter chapter number three colossians oh thank you jesus father we thank you father we bless you lord let someone be free tonight that's why apostle paul says in colossians 3 16 let the word of christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with a grace in your hearts to the lord let the word of christ dwell in you richly the word of god dwell in you richly because the word of god is light when that word enters in you darkness is shattered psalm 119 verse 130 the entrance of god's word brings in light and it gives understanding to the symbol the entrance of god's word in a believer brings in god because god is light now in colossians chapter 3 look at first number three look at first number three the bible says for you are dead and your life is hid with the christ in god now let me ask you now if you are dead why are you fearing death you don't need to fear death because you're already dead you don't die twice you die once the bible says for you are dead and your life is hid with the christ in god now first number four when christ who is our life not who shall be our life but christ who is our life present continuous tense for christ who is our life shall appear then shall you also appear with him in glory the word is telling us christ who is our life christ is our life so the life flowing in you is no human life it is Christ's life. That life is above COVID-19. That life is above HIV AIDS. That life is above the plague of cancer. This life is superior. It is the Zohar life. It is God's class of life. It is not human life. That's what we mean by dwelling in the presence of God. Dwelling in the secret place of the Lord. Of the Most High. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, you are dwelling there to enjoy the shadow. The shadow here we are talking of the blessing. The blessing of the Lord. We are talking of the cover. The blessing. Whatever flows from the Lord. He who dwells in the secret. So here we are talking of abiding in his presence 
And being conscious of his presence, walking in the reality of his presence, and walking in the knowledge of the scripture. Walking in the knowledge, abiding in the word, abiding in the word, abiding in the word, which will necessitate the Zohe life, the God's life to flow in you. Now, let's go back to first, I mean, to, to Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Psalm 91, we are now in verse number 2. He says, And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. I will say. What are you saying, child of God? What are you saying? What is it that is coming out of your mouth? The, the right of these Psalms, and I believe it's Moses, he say, I will say of the Lord, is my refuge and my fortress. I will say something. What are you saying about your God? What are you saying? David says in Psalm 23, from verse 1 all the way to 6, but I praise. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in one. I shall not lack. He leaded me to where there are green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. And he continues to speak of how he causes me to rest where there is calmness. Then he says, even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, hear that, I shall fear no evil. David is speaking, he says, even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, death is on this side, death is on this side, and the, the shadow is in that valley, is walking in between them. He says, I shall fear no evil, for the Lord is with me. He says, he, his rod and his staff, they comfort me. And it's, at that point he says, he shall prepare a table for me in the midst of my enemies. And he continues to say, surely, goodness and mercy. Imagine someone in the valley of the shadow of death. Someone being threatened. Child of God, you can't speak the way the world is saying. I, I, I always sympathize with the men of God and we need to awake, please, my fellow pastors. And we speak the word of God. We speak the voice of God. Doctors are not God's spokesmen. We need to declare what God has said. The word of God says, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Isaiah 53 verse 1 says, whose report shall we believe? Whose report are you believing? You have chosen to believe the report of the world instead of believing the report of the Lord. The report of the Lord does not say, by his stripes we were healed. A thousand shall fall at my side. Ten thousand at my right hand side. Nay shall they come near my dwelling. I shall not fear the, the pestilence that flyeth by, by noon day. Not the destruction that cometh by night. I shall not fear. But what are we hearing from, from men of God? Please we need to awake and come to the level we ought to be and speak the voice of God. I shall not fear. If you are the one already fearing, what shall you tell the children of God? What shall you tell the people of God? Men of God, even before the government closed the church, servants of God ran and shut the doors of the church and people were told to go home. I pray to God that he will help us. We need to know what we need to speak, what we shall say. The, in David, I mean Psalms 91, he says, first two, I believe it's Moses, he says, I will say of the Lord, is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. And he says in verse number three, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. Now, before I come to point three, allow me to finish with the first, I mean, point number two. Speaking, some, I mean, Proverbs 18 21, the Bible says, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So, anytime you are speaking, that word, when it comes to your mouth, it is boosted. By the power that is on your tongue. That word is boosted. That word is boosted by the power that resides on your tongue. So when you, you, you just feel symptoms of malaria. Symptoms of coffee 19. And you begin to say, I think I, I have coffee 19. The demon of coffee 19 will fly and attack. 
When you say, oh, I feel like uh, I have asthma, I feel like asthmatic, the spirit of asthma will fly because you have already released a word with the power into the atmosphere. So you need to know what to speak. You need to know what to say. Then as he, he, he said, he said, I will trust in the Lord. He says, in him will I trust. In him will I trust. And he says, first number three, to show his trust. He says, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. And from the noise and pestilence, he shall cover thee with his feathers. And his wing shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid. Allow me to pause there. First number four is talking of, I mean, he's, he's, he's talking of putting his trust in the Lord. First two, first three, talking of surely he knows the Lord shall deliver him. What are we talking of here? We are talking of faith. And not just the faith, but violent faith. Violent faith. He says, in him shall I trust. Trust is the highest level of faith. Trust. Trust. Remember when Nebuchadnezzar took Shendrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they cast them in the, in, the, in the furnace of fire. Shendrach and his friend had already told Nebuchadnezzar that our God is able to deliver us. That is faith. And he, they continued and told him, and even if he will not deliver us, we will not bow to your idol, O king. That is now fire lens of faith. Now, when they were cast into that furnace of fire, the fourth man showed up. And fire had no dominion. Fire had no dominion over them. Now, when they came out of the fire, Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has not allowed them to bow to the idol, but has delivered them because they trusted in him. Hear that? The king said they trusted in him. He has delivered them because they trusted in him. Anytime you put your trust in the Lord, death is paralyzed. Death is meant to the less. Death is paralyzed. Death is paralyzed. Put your faith, your trust, in the Lord. When you put your trust in the Lord, you will surely say, like the writer of this psalm, surely he will deliver me from COVID-19. Surely he will deliver me from HIV hate. Surely he will deliver me from cancer. Surely he will deliver me from poverty. Surely he will deliver me because I have put my trust in him. Hear this. First three, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, whether it's witchcraft or what, he will deliver. And from the noisome pestilence, that is the plague that comes making a lot of noise. That's what we mean by noisome pestilence. It's making noise all over. The way it is making noise on, on our telecast every now and then. So you need, you, you need to look at Hebrew 11, and the Bible talks of Enoch. The Bible says, by faith. That is Hebrew 11, verse 5, it says, by faith. Enoch was translated that he should not see death. By faith. Enoch was translated that he should not see death. We must operate by faith that we may be translated not to see this COVID. Hebrew 11, and allow me to read, but still, I want you to talk chapter 91 of Psalms, because you are still coming there. Look at Hebrew chapter 11, and let me read verse 32 to that file. The Bible says, And what shall I more say? For the, ti for the time would not fail, I mean, for, ti for the time would it fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jebdeh, and of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, all through faith subdued kingdoms. We can subdue kingdoms. Who wrote righteousness? Who obtained promises? 
Oh, stop the mouth of liars. Oh, quench the violence of fire. Escape the end of the sword. Out of weakness who are men strong. They walk valiant in the fight. They turn to flight. The armies of the aliens. We can turn to flight. The armies of COVID-19. Women receive their dead race to life. Hear that statement. Women receive their dead race to life again. And others were tortured. Not accepting deliverance. That they might obtain a better resurrection. Women are their, their people. They, they, they refuse to bury. And they say no. I won't bury you. Remember Tabitha Dorcas. The widow said no, no, no. Will not allow this woman to die. She must come back to life. That is faith. That is faith. That is faith. When the Shunammite woman, her son, died, the Bible says, instead of going down to mourn and bury her dead son, she took that dead body, the corpse of her son, to the upper room where the servant of God, Elisha, used to sleep. And she called on Elisha, and he came and raised that child back to life. It's not time to go down. It's time to go up in the mighty name of Jesus. It's not time to go down no matter what. Even if your business has been affected, child of God, if one door is shut, there is another door open for you. The Bible says God is faithful. Oh, will not allow you to be tempted beyond that which you can bear. And in every temptation, he will make a way of escape. There is a way of escape. In Jesus' mighty name. May your hands be open in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number four, although my time is gone. Number four is, look at Psalm 91. We are still in Psalm 91. And I want to continue reading. Now, look at verse number five. It says, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at no day. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. First eight, only with thine eyes shall thou be owned and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord which is uh, my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Now hear that statement. You shall not be afraid. What are we talking of here? We are talking of boldness. We are talking of faith. We are talking of confidence. You have that boldness. You shall not be afraid. He's talking of a thousand falling on one side. Ten thousand on the other side. <laughs> but they shall not come near thee. You have seen how thousand and thousand are fallen, even, even though the knowledge is not true. I mean, the, the, those reports is not purely true. Some of them have died of other sickness, but not purely corona. Thousands have died all over the world. But if you operate by faith, fear not. You shall only be on with your own eyes. The reward of the wicked. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will preserve you. The Bible says, you shall fear not. The Bible says, the righteous are bold as a lion. Proverbs 30. The bold, the righteous are bold as a lion. You need to walk in boldness. The word fear not appears in the Bible 365 times. That means every day there is a word for you. Fear not. Fear not. After the departure of Moses, God appeared to Joshua. And he told him, Joshua. My servant, now arise and lead these people to possess their land. And he continued to repeat one word. Fear not. Be courageous. Be of good courage. Only fear not. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. Because the, the, the platform of death, I mean death operates majorly on the platform of fear and ignorance. I will repeat, death operates majorly on the platform of fear and ignorance. Fear not. And the cure for fear is the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth. Apostle Paul says, you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Satan knows that. He can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. So you need to stand by that truth. 
You need to stand by that truth. Now the church, apostle says, is the ground and the pillar of truth. The church is the ground and the and the pillar of the truth. That's why we need to, to get all of the truth. We need to get all of the truth. And it will set us free. For the first number five, we need to be aware of his angelic ministry. We need to be aware of his angelic ministry. The Bible talks of his angels. In Psalm, Psalm 34, verse number 7, the Bible says, His angel encamps. The angel of the Lord encamps around them that fear him. And in Psalm 103, verse 20, the Bible says, His angel excel in strength. In other words, they are, they, are, they, 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 they are super beings. They operate in the higher realms. So they are power. You need to realize you don't need to fear demons because demons, Satan fell with a dad of the angels. Those are the demons. But there are two dads, angels of God. Okay, it says in verse 11, allow me to begin from verse 11, there shall no evil before thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and enter the young lion and the dragon shalt thou treble under feet. We are talking of when he has given his angels charge over you. Be conscious of the angelic ministry. The early church, church was conscious, was aware there is angelic ministry. That's why in Acts chapter 12, when they were interceding for Peter to be rescued from, from prison, when Peter came and knocked at the door where they were praying, and a lady called Rhoda went to open and heard the voice of Peter, she came back, even having not opened the door, and told them, Peter has come. And they told her, shut up. That must be his angel. The, the early church was conscious of the angelic ministry. We need to be conscious that there are angels, angels with us. Even when, when you are in danger, be conscious that God is with me. And his angels are encamping around to me. Are encamping around to me. I was reading a testimony of one man of God. He was flying and up in there, the pilot told them, Ladies and gentlemen, things are not well. One of the engine has not. And one man was not terrified. He was not born again. He was settled in that plane. And that man, when later the plane settled, landed safely, that man told the man of God, I knew as long as you were in this plane, God will not allow you to crash. Therefore, I was ready to dive to where you would go because I know if, the, if you will be rescued, I will dive and hold that all of you that we may be rescued together. The man had faith in the man of God. He knew God must take care of him. So you need to have faith in God and have faith in yourself and that be aware there are angels and coming around you. May the Lord give you understanding. First, I mean, number six is love. You need to love him. You need to love the Lord. He says, he says in, in verse 13, is, uh, verse 14, because he had set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. Now there are two things here he has revealed to us. He has said, you have set your love upon him. Therefore, he will deliver you. Because you have set your love upon him. He says, I will deliver you from trouble. I will deliver him in trouble. I will deliver him and I will honor you. Child of God, choose to love God. Stop gimmicks. Christianity is not religion. Be serious with God. This is life. Christianity is not religion. Stop counting it among the, in the religious faith. No, Christianity is God's life in us. You need to be aware the author of salvation, Jesus Christ, is alive. 
is alive. But the others who founded the other faith are still in the grave. But Jesus is alive forevermore. So you need to choose to love him. Apostle Paul asked, what shall, cons- what shall separate us? In Romans chapter 8. What shall separate us from the love of God? Which is in Christ Jesus. And he begins to talk of the most awful things. He says, he says is it death? Is it famine? Is it pestilence? What is it? And he says, brethren, I am persuaded that neither death, neither pestilence, no famine, no kindness, period. That is able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Become his lover. Become his dear. Become his sweetheart. Become the real wife of Jesus Christ. And he will arise to defend his wife. Become his real wife. Because the church is the wife of Christ. Arise and love God without hypocrisy. And the Lord will arise to deliver you. So wherever you are, surrender yourself tonight to God. Release yourself to love God. And then he talks of number, number seven, his name. Because you have known his name. He talks of Mika. Every, five, verse 12, every man shall walk in the name of his God. But I shall walk in the name of the Lord. You need to walk in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. His name is a strong tower. The righteous run unto it and they are safe. Every time you declare in the name of Jesus, the honor of that name, who is Jesus Christ, answers to deliver whoever has called upon that name. That's why the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You need to call upon that name. Everybody answers to his name. Even if you go to a meeting where people don't know you and somebody from nowhere just shout your name, you must raise your eyebrows to see who has called your name. Everybody answers to his name. When you call upon this name, Jesus will answer that name. And finally, he says, he, verse 15, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. And I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Verse 16. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. I will, he shall call upon me. That is prayer. Prayer is an instrument of deliverance. James 5.13. Is anyone among you afflicted? Let him pray. So prayer is an instrument. And he says, now when you af- apply all these instruments I've talked of here, verse 16 says, with long life will I satisfy you. Will I satisfy you? And I will show you my salvation. Child of God, I thank God for watching. I thank God for following. I believe you have been blessed. Now I want us to pray together in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This world is powerful. This word has come to deliver you tonight. And I believe already you are delivered. Satan cannot continue hearing that word and not leave you alone. So if you are not born again, I want to lead you first of all to receive Christ. To allow the Lord to reign in your life. Then I will pray with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, if you are not born again, just pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Lord Jesus, you died for me. You laid your life down for me that I may be alive in God. Forgive me of my sins. Make me a new creation. Jesus save me. Jesus save me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. From now on, I am born again. I am forgiven. It is all in my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. You have made that prayer. You are now born again. You are a child of God. We need to hear from you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now from where you are, I want you to lift up your voice and begin to rebuke that spirit of death. Tell dead you have no dominion. I have known who I am. The life of God is flowing in me. Jesus is the true vine. I am a branch. What makes Jesus live is what is making me live. Now lift up your voice and begin to declare that word. Open your mouth and say, be- begin to declare dead you have no dominion over my life. I am born again. The Lord is my savior. In the mighty name of Jesus, I come against you, spirit of death. I rebuke you now. In the name of Jesus, 
In the name of Jesus, you spirit of fear, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You spirit of fear, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Makasa gabalaba. You spirit, COVID-19, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Lose my viewers right now. Lose in the name of Jesus. You have no dominion. You have no dominion that the truth, and you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. That is the truth I command you, Satan. Lose right now. I break your heart. I break your heart. I break your heart. I render you powerless. You have no dominion over my life. Witchcraft, you have no dominion. I crush you. Shaka to sakapa. Lahama shahanda. Zega to sokopo labosa. Telia babushata. Lema zegedia kakabalaba. I break those chains in the name of Jesus. You are under my feet. I know who I am. I am a man in authority. All power belongs to me. Jesus spoke those words. He said, all oh, power in heaven and on earth has been given to him. And he says, yes, in Luke 10, 19, that all oh, power and authority I give unto you. I have this power now. I have this power. And therefore, in the name of Jesus, I command you loose. I command you bar. I command you break now. You infirmity. Loose from wherever you are holding yourself. In the mighty name of Jesus, we don't fear you. You are paralyzed. You are stingless. You are stingless. Shaka tasaka parubaza. Zega dasaka paraba. I declare fire. Yes, I soak my viewers in the blood of Jesus, wherever they are, when that on a sick bed, or wherever they are, I set them free. I set them free. Yes, I set them free. I release healing in the name of Jesus. I speak healing. I am a man in authority. Be healed, be free, be delivered, be restored. Rabu Shahanda, Shahanda Laba, Zehete Lebe Sota, Lima Sagadia Kakabalaba, Moko Sokopia Kakabalaba. Be free now. I break no shackles of poverty. I break no shackles of infirmity. I break no shackles of witchcraft. I break them. I set you free. I set that business free. I speak grace to that business. Move forward. Progress. No stagnation. I destroy your spirit of stagnation. Ramu Shalalababa. I set your mind free. I set your mind free. I bind the spirit of fear. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to refuse to fear. Declare to the spirit of fear. Yes, I rebuke you. I reject you. Infirmity. Dead, I rebuke you. I cast you out. Malaba Bushahata. Soak your body now in the fire. Wherever you are, begin to soak yourself in the fire. Tell the enemy, I fear you not. I know who I am. I am a child of God. I am seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I am seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Declare with your mouth, Christ Jesus is my life. Christ is my life. The life flowing in me is no human life. It is Zohe life. God's class of life. God's caliber of life. It is Zohe life. Zohe life is superior to coffee 19. Zohe life is superior to losses. Zohe life is superior to death. Jesus died my death because he bore my sins. He took my sins. The soul that sinner shall surely die. Therefore, dead, you have no dominion. Jesus died my death. Sin, you have no dominion over my life. By his tribes, I was healed. I was healed. I was healed. I was healed. I am free. I am free. Open your mouth. Declare. I am free. I am delivered. I am free. I will not die prematurely. I will live my life in fullness. With long life will I satisfy you. I want to bless your life now. In the name of Jesus. I bless you. I bless you with long life. I bless you with divine health. I bless you in the name of Jesus. You are protected. You are preserved. You are protected. And you are going out and you are coming here. You are blessed. You are protected. You are preserved. It is well with your life. It is well with your destiny. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are favored. I speak life to you in the name of Jesus. Whatever 
the enemy had killed in you, whatever business, whatever it is, or career, I speak life to it, resurrect it now in the name of Jesus. I command your business to rise again. I command our business to resurrect. I command your family to resurrect. I speak life to your marriage. I speak Speak life to your marriage. Marco Sagada Saka Paraba. Lift up your voice and glorify the Lord now. Begin to magnify the Lord. Glorify the Lord. Glorify the Lord. Glorify the Lord. Malobu Shila Lababu Satalaba. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' precious name. Please be conscious of his presence. Walking, abiding there. Walk in the name of Jesus Christ. Be conscious of his angelic presence. Trust in him. Put your faith in him. And give yourself to prayer. As you abide in his presence, he will surely deliver you. He will surely fight for you. So walk in that. You will not die prematurely. In Jesus' mighty name. You will live to see your children, children, even to the fourth generation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. In Jesus' name. Please allow me to post there. Thank you so much for following. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. God bless you. God increase you. God enlarge you. Please, you, in case you need to call me, our number is on your screen, please. You need to call us. 0702-713158. You need to call that number. Someone will be waiting to pray with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, you need to know how to worship the Lord with your substance. You need to know how to give to God. We worship the Lord with our substance. And that's a kingdom principle you need to realize. After God has blessed you, it's always important to honor him. You cannot support God. You cannot support God. Let me tell you the truth. You cannot. And if you want to, to believe, you cannot support God. When you were not born again, who was supporting God? When you were not alive, when you are not even born to this earth, who was supporting God? God would have died if you are the one to support him. So God cannot depend on you to do his assignment. What you need is to know how to worship him, how to serve him, and as you do so, it is for your own good. It is for your own benefit. You provoke blessing by serving him. He says in Job 36 verse 11, If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. They shall spend their days in prosperity if they obey and serve him. So we need to obey and serve him with our finances. Give him our tithe. Give him our offering. And we usually use m till number. And that number, m till number, is on your screen. It is 586916. I repeat that number is 586916. 586916. It is on your screen. Send your offering, send your tithes, and your giving, and the Lord bless you. Let me bless that offering. Father, we thank you for this giving. Receive it. Receive it, Lord. And as your people have chosen to honor you with their substance, honor them, Lord, with that, what they need most. Honor them with what they need most. Honor them with what they need most. Honor them with what they need most. Because what they are giving to you cannot buy what they need. There are some of them who need health. Their money cannot buy that health. Daddy give them health. There are those who need deliverance. Money cannot buy deliverance. Deliver them, Daddy God. There are those who need marriage partners, Lord. Money cannot buy a marriage partner. Man cannot buy a wife, can, man cannot buy a husband. Lord, give them as they have chosen to honor you. Because the thing is honoring you. As we have honored you with the little we have. Honor us with diverse miracles. And let your name be exalted. We love you and we honor you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God increase you. God enlarge you. Please, on Sunday, I welcome you to our Sunday service. And our Sunday service will be beginning from 9.30 a.m. to 11. Our Sunday service will be 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. East African time. East African time, please join our services and the Lord bless you. Like our page, 
share with the people, and God bless you. We love you so much. Let's share goodness in the fellowship in the name of Jesus Christ. Surely, goodness and mercy, signs, wonders, and miracles shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom, shalom, peace.